We got a surprise winner in the NASCAR Xfinity Series race at Talladega. Keanu Reeves is now a race car driver, and Justin Allgaier is in a really bad spot heading into the Roval. Welcome back to Break Hard. I'm Matt. Sammy Smith using lessons learned from his surrogate father, Dale Jr., wins at Talladega. And now, okay, it's not as good as Dale Jr. winning the summer Daytona race back in 2001. But for Sammy Smith, it was very much an unexpected win. The 12th seed coming into the race on Saturday locks himself in to the round of eight now, something I don't think anybody saw. Sammy Smith was an easy write off, right? I mean, he's been pretty mediocre, and that's putting it nicely, for most of the season. Now, got into the playoffs. Good for him. His teammate Brandon Jones didn't do that, and Brandon Jones will get to him in a second. Sammy Smith, eh, he made it in. Doesn't look like he's really going to do much. Now he is. He is now going to race in the round of eight and has a possibility of still contending for a championship. And as Jeff Burton said on the broadcast, may be the only junior motorsports car that advances or has a shot at a championship because Talladega wreaked havoc on the point standings. It was it was bad. It was wasn't like Mets collapsing at the end of the year type of bad or or even like FSU's football season this year, but it was pretty bad for uh, a number of drivers out there. So to start things off, like we said, I said a minute ago, Brandon Jones is out here absolutely not giving an F about anything. Uh, the the Brandon Jones don't give an F tour, much like the Ross Chastain tour, uh, made a stop in Talladega on Saturday, and he took out two of his teammates in one swipe, which was Pretty impressive. Took himself out as well, which is not something you want to do. But he turns his teammate, Carson Quapel, announced as a full-time driver this week for JRM in 2025, takes him out going down the front stretch right past the start-finish line. That collects Justin Allgaier, who just needed to have a good day. All he needed to do was survive, get some points so that he would just kind of still be there on the cut line and then just have a solid Roval race. Well, gets taken out. Now he's in a really bad spot heading into the Roval. Brandon Jones is junked. And hey, listen, he's not going to be there next year, so it doesn't really seem to matter to him. His teammates, though, I will say, did not work with him all day. And maybe there's something to that. Carson Quapel, for the first time this season, I feel like I jinxed him, does not complete all the laps in a NASCAR Xfinity Series race. Huge bummer for him, but he was running really well up to this point in his first ever super speedway race. Austin Hill, a lot of people, obviously he's a polarizing character, don't want to see him succeed. Well, guess what? You don't have to worry. He got a ton of damage in uh, the wreck on the backstretch with a woman prior to that. And uh, yeah, his day wasn't done, but like it certainly hurt him. He came home with a 24th place finish. Like I said, not the best. Sammy Smith wins the race. Ryan Sieg finishes second, and Sammy Smith owes him a ton because Sieg stuck with him when he could have popped out and tried to, you know, make a run at it. Chandler Smith uh, looked like he was going to be in contention, was not there at the end. Riley Herbst looked super strong, uh, couldn't close the deal out to get his second win of the season, third win of his career. Does not happen. He comes home third. Sheldon Creed in fourth, even though he spun at the start finish line there. But hey, at least it's not a second place finish, right? And then you have Chandler Smith in fifth, Jesse Love in sixth, Jeb Burton uh, coming home in uh, seventh, Jeffrey Edward Burton. That's how they got Jeb. Fun fact for everybody out there. David Starr still exists. He finishes in eighth place. Brennan Poole in ninth. You guys didn't know he was in the race until I just told you right now. And Kyle Sieg in the 10th the place. A double top 10 for the Sieg's. That is worthy of a trip to Golden Corral or whatever their favorite fine dining destination is. Overall, Oh, pretty solid race. There was a number of accidents. Don't really love to see that. Nobody flipped over, though, so that was great. Leland Honeyman looked like he was going to be a force there for a while, and then he finished back where Leland Honeyman typically finishes at. Uh, yeah, it was the Xfinity Series at Talladega is what it comes down to. You have a number of incidents. Uh, a lot of it is about just surviving for the most part. Shane Van Gisbergen coming into the tri-oval gets a big bump from the 26 of Dean Thompson. That got the, the 97 of SCG loose. He goes down to the apron. He was cool to ride there and then try to, you know, blend back up once they got through the tri-oval. Well, the unfortunate part is Dean Thompson kind of got ran over from behind, gets turned. He hooks SVG in the right rear, turns him head on into the wall. Abysmal finish for 
SVG. He now heads to the Roval in what I wouldn't consider to be a must win position, but like he's really going to have to capitalize on the stages there and have a good finish at the end of the race if he wants to advance. Then you also had last week's winner, um, Eric Almarola in the He Gets Us car. Turns out he doesn't protect against flat tires because Eric Almarola brings out a caution with a flat tire. He's shredding debris everywhere. Eric Almarola th did think he was blowing up though, and he might be the only person that thinks that a flat tire is blowing up, but I digress in that situation. Sammy Smith goes on to win the race, like I said. Huge win for him, huge win for Junior Motorsports, and hey, it gives him momentum for the rest of the season and into next year. We'll have to see how all of that plays out because he's going to have some really stout teammates next season as well. Now, we talked about the Roval. That's where the Xfinity Series is headed to next week. Guess who's never lost an Xfinity Series race at the Roval that he's participated in? AJ Allmendinger. He's won at the Roval for five straight seasons, four straight in the Xfinity Series. Last year, he didn't race the Xfinity race. He raced the Cup race. Guess what? Won it. So now he heads to the Roval next Saturday in a must-win position. He needs to win if he wants to advance on in the playoffs. Unfortunately, his teammate Shane Van Gisbergen, really good at road courses. So it could be a battle of the titans, if you will, a heavyweight match. Um, Tyson versus Holyfield. Uh, that's the extent of my boxing knowledge, but that doesn't matter. It could be a big-time heavyweight matchup, and it'll be interesting to see. I don't think SVG needs to flip stages. I think he can you know, go straight for the win because I think he's going to the speed for that. Maybe AJ takes the reverse approach and he does attempt to flip stages and sacrifice potentially that win at the end. I don't know how this is all going to work out for them, but it should be very interesting to watch. Should be really good to see those two uh, guys go head to head next weekend at the Roval. The points right now as they stand, Sammy Smith is locked in. Chandler Smith plus 57. He's in a really, really, really good spot to advance barring like absolute catastrophic failure on like lap one of the race next weekend at the Roval. Austin Hill plus 29, Salvage His Day, really good position. Cole Custer plus 28, Sheldon Creed plus 25, Jesse Love plus 15, Riley Herbst plus 13, Sam Mayer plus 10. There's These guys are in pretty good positions, um, barring somebody, you know, winning or having really good stages while they have really bad stages next week. AJ Allmendinger minus 10. Like I said, he should probably chase those stage points and stage wins. That could really help him out. Justin Allgaier minus 18. He could be in the same boat as an AJ Allmendinger, but he's probably going to need some help. Shane Van Gisbergen minus 21. Parker Kligerman minus 26. Parker's a good road racer. I'm going to go ahead and say Parker's out. SVG, Mm, he's not in a must win, but he's in a either win both stages and have a good finish or must win after that. And then Justin Allgaier probably needs some help from everybody else in there. Points are interesting. It's going to be a heck of a time when we get to the Roval next weekend. And now time for one of the more fun stories of the weekend. Neo is now a race car driver, not the rapper, the one from the Matrix. Turns out John Wick was hot behind the wheel of a GR86 this weekend at the Toyota GR Cup race at Indianapolis. Johnny Utah spun out in turn nine about halfway through the race, but still rebounded for a decent finish. Bill's best friend Ted brought home a 25th place finish uh, in his first ever career start. For Keanu, this is a very dentist move of him to start his racing career at the age of 60, but hey, he was in speed with Sandra Bullock. While he didn't wheel that city bus around. He did watch her do it, which is kind of like on the job training. And if you can move a bus like that, you can probably move a GR86. They're tiny, they're lightweight, and then you can, you know, handle them pretty well, other than the fact that he spun out. Also, 30th anniversary of that movie this week. They're going to have a like re-premiere, bring it back to the theaters, whatever it is. He's going to show back up with Sandra Bullock and maybe rekindle some love. Who knows? I don't actually know if they were ever together. Somebody fact check that. Regardless, Keanu's teammate in this race was some guy named Cody Jones, who is apparently from that trio group, troop, quartet of Dude Perfect. I guess making trick shot basketball uh, videos is enough to qualify you to be a race car driver. He came home 25th. I reverse that. Keanu came home 23rd. Foot, no, 25th. Fuck. 25th. Connor Jones came home 23rd. Really confusing moment there for my brain. But I will say this about Keanu. 
hey, 25th, maybe not the best finish that you could ever have. Did finish ahead of Jade Avedisian, though. And if you know anything about racing development, Jade is a much touted prospect. She's one of the higher ups in the Toyota racing development pipeline. Sign Keanu up to a TRD development deal. Put him down with the kids. Get him a ride at Chili Bowl. Continue to put him in the GR86 Cup cars. I don't care. He could be a formidable prospect like Ford is continuing to back Frankie Muniz. Frankie, great guy. Probably not the best development driver that they have, but he's in the pipeline. Kind of. Sort of. Doesn't matter. Either way, Keanu Reeves, now a race car driver, and I think we all love to see that. So let me know in the comments what you thought about the Xfinity race this weekend, ex expectations for the Roval, Keanu being a race car driver. Like and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on TikTok at Break Hard, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at Break Hard